Hello all, welcome back. This is third lesson in the fifth module and we discuss about express of conductions. If we look at the overview of this module, we will look at what are express route and different capabilities and connections which uh, is possible with express route and options to coexist side to side connectivity and express route. So when we talk about express route, it's a way of creating dedicated private connectivity from uh, a customer's on-prem data center to Microsoft Azure Cloud. Since this provides a dedicated connectivity, there are a lot of benefits associated with as well. One is customers normally uh, don't uh, have to go through internet for their uh, uh, connectivity. So obviously the connection is secure and the customer can get a dedicated bandwidth from the uh, provider as well. So if they need certain uh, high bandwidth application, they can uh, use express route to uh, either transfer the data or uh, if they want to uh, keep some databases in on-prem and if they want to host their application on Azure, they can use the dedicated bandwidth to host end-to-end -end application as well. And these are very useful in scenarios like uh, uh, business continuity and disaster recovery as well. So whenever there is a need for uh, BCDR, they can fail over their data center uh, to Azure using this express route uh, within the stipulated time. And uh, there are some scenarios where customer needs to transfer large amount of data and Offline migration might take some time and that might not be the right approach. And if this is again a continuous uh, 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 data source, then uh, they can uh, obviously use Express Route to synchronize the data to the cloud uh, using very fast connectivity. If you look at uh, how the Express Route end-to-end -end connectivity looks like, uh, as uh, mentioned in the picture, right? We have Azure uh, uh, on the one side. We have a Microsoft Edge, which enables the connectivity from uh, Azure Data Center. And on the other edge, we have the on-premises customer data center. And there is a partner edge, which is enabled on the on-premises side. And between those two, Microsoft creates an express out circuit, which is highly available. So that's why we have two different connection. One is the primary connection and the secondary connection. And um, there is a partner involved in providing the last mile connectivity from the partner edge to uh, on-premises network. So if we look at end-to-end uh, -end from a uh, connectivity and pricing perspective, the customer has to go to a partner, uh, say for example, based on uh, the region, uh, the partner uh, list might vary, uh, uh, say in US, where it's on uh, AT&T, etc. might be a partner, whereas in region like India, prominent teleco partners like Atel, Sifi, Tata Communications might be some of the partners as well. So customer has to go through the partner and they will enable the last mile connectivity from the partner edge to the customer data center. And for that, customer has to pay a fee for the partner. And then from the partner uh, edge, Microsoft enables the express route high availability circuit to connect to Microsoft data centers. So for that, customer has to pay a fee for the Microsoft. So that's how the end-to-end -end setup works. If we look at different capabilities for the express route, it enables uh, normally the layer three connectivity with uh, highly redundant connections. And once we have set up an express route with a particular Azure region, say for example, I have a data center in New York and I use US East as my Azure region. And if I set up an express route connectivity from my New York data center to East US on Azure, I'll be able to use the same express route to connect to any of the US regions as well, since this is within, yes, same geography. In addition, there is an option called premium add-on. And if I enable this premium add-on, 
I'll be able to use the same express route which I have set up with east to US and I'll be able to connect to any of the Azure region as well all over the globe. There is another option called express route global reach and with this option right uh, Azure express route enables connectivity between uh, customers on premises data centers as well say for example if a customer has two different data center one in amsterdam and other in new york and customer has two different express route circuits one with the new york data center to east us and another with the, uh, amsterdam data center to uh, say for example uh, north europe then in this case um, if the customer enables a global reach option, they will be able to connect between their two on-prem data centers as well. There are different bandwidth options uh, which is available with Express Route. A customer can start small starting from 50 Mbps to 10 Gbps and based on the capacity uh, uh, they go for the pricing varies. So there are three different pricing models which is available. One is uh, the unlimited model and in this model the customer is charged a flat fee based on how much bandwidth uh, uh, they are willing to go. This is ideally useful for uh, scenarios like customer has large amount of data to transfer uh, so they can get a fixed bandwidth and pay for it and this will be uh, economical in the long term as well. And second is uh, metered connection and in this uh, approach customer is built based on how much uh, they use. Say for example if a customer uh, use express route connection to transfer uh, say 100 terabytes of data uh, then customer is charged based on the data volume and the bandwidth he had chosen. And third, there is a premium option as well. This enables uh, some additional capabilities like uh, uh, capability to add a large number of uh, uh, routes in the route table and ability to connect multiple uh, VNets, etc. So there are two different connectivity modes which is possible with express route one is uh, what we call it as private pairing and other is microsoft pairing the way private pairing works is that try right, customer try to connect their on prem uh, workloads to uh, workloads in azure uh, virtual network so that is an end to end private connectivity from one of the private on prem services to azure private services within a virtual network that's what we call it as private peering. And Microsoft peering helps to connect uh, from uh, on-prem data center to public Azure services. Say for example, if customer uh, use Azure services like uh, uh, media services for an example, or an app services which has a public endpoint, then we can enable Microsoft peering to connect to those uh, uh, publicly exposed services through a private dedicated connection as well. So that's one uh, advantage of Microsoft peering. And other one is that, uh, uh, say for example, if a customer want to connect to other Microsoft services uh, like uh, CRM Dynamics, Office 365, etc., that is also possible with uh, Microsoft peering as well. When we look at different connectivity options, uh, there are three major connectivity topology which uh, uh, customers use based on uh, uh, their existing scenario. So first is, uh, uh, we call it as a, uh, cloud exchange co-location. This topology works when the customer has their uh, data center in a uh, co-location with a cloud exchange provider like uh, Equinix. And uh, in this case, uh, the express route connectivity is established between the cloud exchange and Azure, and it might be either layer two and, or layer three connection. The second option is point to point Ethernet connection. In this case works well when customer has a standalone DC 
and uh, the customer wants to connect to Azure. So there is a point-to-point -point Ethernet connectivity uh, created from um, Azure to the on-prem data center. And the third topology is uh, any to any or IP VPN connection. And it is also called as express out uh, usage in conjunction with MPLS. So customer might have multiple data center on-prem and they might be uh, connected uh, through MPLS. And this express out connection act as one of the spoke of MPLS connection to enable a connectivity to Azure resources. That's what we call it as any to any IP VPN. Even though customers uh, uh, want to use express route for dedicated private connectivity, there are some scenarios where customers want to use express route along with uh, their existing site to site connection as well. One scenario might be right if the entire uh, express route goes down they need a secure failover path for their on-premises as well. Since site-to-site uh, -site uses IPsec tunnel over the internet, uh, uh, this requirement might be okay for during DR scenarios as well. And another scenario might be, uh, since express route is a bit costlier, uh, customer might not uh, want to create express route circuit for all the regions uh, or connectivity to all the data centers. So in this case, uh, a customer might use site-to-site uh, -site for some of the data centers which uh, don't have express route connectivity. So if we look at the picture uh, which is uh, shown right, uh, there are two different gateway which uh, we use. Uh, one is for express route connection, we, we call it as express route gateway and for other VPN connection we can share it same VPN gateway and we need to deploy both these gateways in the same virtual network in gateway subnet uh, so that we can coexist both the connections. Uh, thank you very much.